So this week coming up, or that we're, I guess, into now, um, is often a little bit confusing for people. Um, so we're covering, um, so we have like the project starting, which is kind of like, it's kind of like a review of a lot of the concepts from the first uh, several lessons. Um, and I think, you know, we've been doing journal entries now for a couple of weeks and people like some people get to where they're like, feel really comfortable with that. Like the, the debit and credit rules that for assets, it's, you know, it, the debit increases it and the credit decreases it. And for liabilities, it's the opposite. And, but other people um, it's just not as, it just doesn't come as naturally, I guess. And so, um, so we hit this stage now where for the people who kind of mastered that, it gets pretty, you know, it just keeps going and it's not too bad. But for the people who like really feel like they're still struggling with debit and credit, um, it becomes really hard because like from here on, things just assume you know that, you know what I mean? Like it just, it's just like assumed that that's where you are. So that's the challenge of of kind of the current place, I guess, is is if you're not feeling comfortable with with debit and credit rules, um, you have to get that way pretty quick because it's it, that doesn't ever go away. We just keep having journal entries. Uh, we just learn more in depth about different types of assets, different types of liabilities, and and how to deal with them. But we still make journal entries. So uh, any any particular stuff you guys are struggling? Or I don't even know if struggling is the right word. That it would be valuable to take a look at and and go over. Yes. Uh, can you actually hear me? I can. I can actually hear you. Sweet. I didn't know if my. Uh... Microphone is working. Uh, so I just had a few questions. Number one for lesson number eight, is there, I didn't see what pages we were supposed to read for that. So I was just wondering if it's a review or where I'm supposed right. to read. Yeah. So there is, there is no, there is no reading assignment with lesson eight. It is. Okay. Um, we're just, we're, we're, we're reviewing stuff that we've already learned in lesson Got eight. There. Okay. Okay. And then, um, so uh, another question I had is net income isn't technically an account, right? It's a, it's a mathematical tool we use to equate equity. Yeah, that's probably a good way of putting it. It's just the difference between revenues and expenses. And okay. so, you know, when we go through that plot process of closing and we close out all of our, all of our revenue and we close out all of our expenses, the difference it's closed to retained earnings. And that difference is either a net income if our revenue exceeded our expenses or it's a net loss. If our, but yeah, there's no account anywhere where you'd record it. It's just a, I guess you call it like a summary of, of the difference between revenue and expenses. Right. But it typically gets recorded in the, uh, the capital. Does it not? It does, but not as net income. Right. So and not in the capital, but in the retained earnings. So, so, we have the owner's capital, which is what the owners contribute, and then the retained earnings, which is any net income less any dividends or draws from the owner, and and so it gets retained in in the in the equity of the business in the form of retained earnings. Gotcha. So what when you increase that, what do you? Uh, that's a credit account, right? Retained earnings. Yeah. So what do you debit when you credit um, retained earnings? What what gets debited? So. Well, so what we end up doing is we end up, we have, we, we close out our revenue account. So a, a revenue account has a credit balance. Mm -hmm. So to close it out or return it back to zero, we would debit that account. Right. And so we would debit or debit revenue, credit retained earnings. Oh, so, gotcha. Okay. So closing retained earnings increase, I mean, closing revenue increases retained earnings. And then expenses, they all have debit balances. And so we we credit those to close them to bring them back to zero, and then we debit the retained earnings. So the expenses decrease retained earnings, and so the net difference between the amount of the credit which increased it and the debit which decreased it is our net income. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Um, here, Daniel, you go ahead. I have a whole bunch more questions, but I don't want to just take over the whole. No, thing. go ahead, because I honestly, I um. I was really trying to come up with some questions this week, but I didn't, I I was like, I got what was going on. And I'm just like, I, and uh, so far I've done really well on all the assignments. So I'm just like, evidently I'm doing okay. So go ahead. Okay, cool. Um, the, uh, the next thing I had was I have this continuing problem where every time I do 
I have an unadjusted trial balance and then I put in the adjusting entries and then my adjusted trial balance doesn't have the same totals as the unadjusted trial balance. And I know that's wrong, but I don't know what I'm screwing up. So does your adjusted trial balance have matching debit and credit totals, but they're yeah. different from the unadjusted? Correct. Yeah, well, that's okay. In fact, it should be different because <laughs> the adjustments the adjustments are making changes to some of the accounts. And so some, somebody leads you astray. Apparently. <laughs> uh, no, we would, we would expect that an, an adjusted trial balance would have different balances than the unadjusted trial balance because of the adjustments. But we would still expect for it to balance, meaning the debits should equal the credits. Right, but, the, but, the, but they won't necessarily be the same credits on the unadjusted and the adjusted on the totals. Correct. Okay, cool. Well, I don't know. I've been working myself into a doozy over that and I just, for no reason, apparently. Well, I, I so, feel like, like, sorry, go ahead, Daniel. So I think, I, I think I know where he might be. So this goes back to the, um, the net, the net income, whether it's a loss or a gain. Um, that's the missing component. That'll usually be the difference where you're getting that the bottom totals between the two. Um, because usually the, uh, if it's a net gain, the credit side is going to have a higher value than the debit side and the debit side will be subtracted from the credit side. And that added to the credit side with the net income or the debit side with the net income will equal, they'll both equal out then. Right. But they, you don't typically calculate that until you do the uh, income statement, right? Right. Correct. So, so yeah, your adjusted trial balance should balance. Right. So after, I mean, after you've made adjustments, it should balance. And then um, I think what Daniel's talking about is when, when we do the, like the, the closing statements or the closing entries, um, if we, people will always use the old retained earnings in there and then it won't balance. And that's because the closing entries will have changed retained earnings um, because the revenue and the expenses and the dividends will have impacted retained earnings. And so if you use, if you still have the old retained earnings in there, then your debit side will be bigger than your credit side typically um, until you close that and have the new retained earnings, which you calculate. You make the income statement, then the statement of retained earnings, and that's where you calculate the new retained earnings, which will give you the the right an, the, you know the right amount. I think that's what we're okay. I'll I'll try doing that. <laughs> and if there's a sample problem, like I'd be happy to work through it too. And like you know, if if there's something that you're like, I keep every time I do this one, I'm oh, I, I was gonna say the the biggest problem with accounting is like it's easier than I think most people think it is. And so they overcomplicate it. They think like, it's gotta be more challenging than this. And so they like go through this big weird process. And and then at the end they find out, Oh, it was honestly just, just transferring those adjusting journal entries into the trial balance. And, and like, I don't know why, but like it's, so, and even to this day, like if I'm doing something complex and I'm I get getting all like wound up in it, I usually have to stop and go. 100% chance you're overcomplicating this. Step back from it. It's it's just debits and credits. Like it's not that complex of a system, but it seems when you're in the middle of it, you can get all twisted around in there. Gotcha. Okay. That's what um, I have another, this is kind of a, a philosophy question because I like to have a, uh, whenever I'm working on something, I like to have like a philosophy that guides me. So I have like the 10 commandments of X. So, <laughs> okay. um, and so my kind of my philosophy with accounting and correct me if I'm wrong, because I want to make sure I have the right philosophy is it's kind of like algebra. So you have your, you have your uh, assets on the one side of the equation and your liabilities and equity on the one side of the equation. And if you ever increase one side, you have to do an equal and opposite reaction on the other. Yeah. But in essence, you know, you, except you could increase assets and decrease assets. Right. But it just has right. to stay in balance. So you could either increase and decrease one side and have no changes to the others. Or if you increase one side, you're going to have to increase the other. So it's not even really opposite, right? Because yeah. there's an equal sign in the middle, <laughs> uh, an increase to an asset. I think, so you're right. If, that's the way to think of it algebraically. In my mind, like if you just think, if I increase an asset, then that had to come from somewhere. It either had to come from another asset. So if, if you know, if my equipment asset goes up, I either had to pay for it with cash 
So to increase one asset, I had to pay with another asset or I had to borrow money to get that equipment. So my equipment asset went up and the liability went up or I had to, you know, I had to contribute money to it. So the asset went up and the owner paid into it. Like if the owner, you know, bought the equipment or something, that's really all that there is to it. If an asset changes, then it's got to be, if, if it increases, it's got to be paid for with something, either another asset, a debt, or an equity contribution by the owner or, a, you know, an owner's contribution. And if a, if an asset goes down, then it's either, you know, then it's either increasing another asset or it's paying off a debt or it's, you know, an expense, which is decreasing the equity. That's it. I mean, so you're right to see it algebraically, but a lot of people... Uh, like like my mother owned a business for years and she like, you know, she just, and I said, this is basic algebra mom. And she would just be like, Whoa, don't even say that word. I, that just makes it harder. And I'm like, I'm like, but you can do algebra. No, I can't. Okay. <laughs> you, you've been running a business successfully for 30 years, but you can't do basic algebra. Uh, I promise you, you can, you know, <laughs> but her brain, as soon as you said the A word, nope. Gotcha. Um, another question I have, which is kind of hypothetical. So when I was running a small lawn mowing business as a teenager, my dad gifted me a lawnmower mm -hmm. to do with it. And I was wondering if you receive a gift in a business like that, how would you record that? Like, like you, obviously it increases your assets, but what it doesn't increase your liabilities or, and it doesn't decrease your liabilities. So like how. Yeah. Like, like, like you know, there's a couple ways to look at it. So either you know, your dad gifted it to you and then you contribute it to the business. So that would be like the same as, you know, putting cash or, or something else. And you can, you can contribute assets into a business other than cash. You, you know, you can do, you know, if I had a building and I'm like, I'm not using this, but I want to use it for my business. I could either lease it to the business or I could, I could give it to the business. And, and so it's kind of like an equity account. At right. That point. Okay. You know, I mean, and so if you're, I don't know. How, like, what, how would I record it if it was like legitimately like your dad was like no claim on the business. And he's like, I'm not giving this to you, son. I'm giving it directly to, you know, uh, Green Lawns LLC or whatever your business is. Or, you know, like, how would I record that? I would have you'd have to show the asset going up. Um, you'd probably still call it equity because it's a contribution by an outside entity into the business, whether that's you or your dad. If If you think about what equity means. It means if the business were to be like liquidated today, so you just go out of business, you have, the business has assets, a lawnmower, maybe you've got an edger, maybe you've got a trailer, I don't know, you know, and then you have some debts you owe people. So all an asset really, I mean, all equity is, it's the assets that you don't have debt on. So if like, a, a, like in a young person's business, maybe you don't have any debt. So all of your assets are just going to equal equity. What that means is when your business goes out of business, your assets first pay off the debts and whatever's left over belongs to you as a, as an individual person now. And so, I mean, that's really all that equity is. It's the part of the business that belongs to you that doesn't belong to the bank or, or to, you know, any other, nobody else has a claim upon it. Right. So, so, so basically universally, it pretty much just goes into like owner capital. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was going to say like, especially with the lawnmower, that would probably be going um, on the asset side. It would be equipment. And then on right. the uh, the owner side, it would be capital. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, let me see. I, I have a whole list here. Let me see what the next thing is. <laughs> oh, yeah. In the project, <laughs> um, there is a, um, a part where it says to do the balance. But I don't have the starting numbers. Um, so I don't know how to change the balance on the sh worksheet. Or maybe my computer is just not pulling up the information I have because I've been working. Uh, in a hotel because I was on vacation. So I don't really have the greatest. Okay. So I'm trying to think of, so we're, let me share my screen here. So this project right here, right? Project number one. Yeah. <clears throat> and so. So it gives you this sort of uh information here gives you the worksheet and then it gives you the transactions and then it gives you some other information so if we go back to 
Come on, this thing's being slow. There it is. So the template and starting file, which is actually in Excel, this is just a preview. It does have beginning balances. Right, um, so I, I can see it on here, but when I open the Excel file, this doesn't exist. So is that just a software error on my end or? I don't know, I'm gonna pull it up right now and see what happens when I open it in Excel. That's not it, that's my other stuff. Just going slow. Okay. So this is what I get when I open Excel. Yeah, I don't have this May post closing trial balance thing. Are you sure it's on the right tab? Like maybe it's on one of these other tabs when it opens? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I looked around because I, I looked at the general journal and the ledger and the worksheet and the finishing statements, but I didn't see the well, hmm. I'll just try reopening it and see what I can do. I was going to say, because I'm opening the exact same file that you would open. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not doing any, I'm not, like, pulling it up from a separate source. I just opened it straight out of Canvas. Right. So, so worst it, case scenario, I just take a picture of it and then run in all the balances. Well, worst case scenario, it, right? scenario is if you open it and it, like, this still doesn't have it, let me know and I'll email this to you and see if that works or something. Okay. Um, Because, uh, I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't be, but computers are weird sometimes. Yeah. Cool. And then um, next thing I had is in actually in the uh, final statements, how should I, I don't really know how to format the finishing statements and I don't know what the uh, like what specific information they're looking for is. What, you mean on that back where we were just a minute ago or are you talking about? Yeah. Something yeah. Else? Where we were just a minute ago. Okay. Um, should have left it open. I actually, it's still up here in my downloads. So. so, I mean. So this one here. Financial here. statements. Yeah. So it just oh, gives yeah, you a, a blank page and it's like, give us your financial statements. So the short answer is, is there's not, like, there's not like one set thing. I mean, I have to grade these. And so they're going to be slightly different with everybody's, you know, an income statement is going to have revenue and expenses. And so if you just look at the example or picture of one in your book. So it, it doesn't like matter that. exactly how I format it as long as it has all the information laid out properly. Well, yeah, I mean, it should be formatted appropriately, but, you know, following an example in your book is fine. Whether you put okay. two cells in between it or one, like, I don't care. Okay. Does that okay. help? I mean. That's so exactly I'm, what I was asking. Okay. Yeah. So I think I had one more question. Um, oh yeah, uh, I know I sent you a message about this on Canvas, but I was wondering if you could actually like walk me through the step-by-step -step process of when an account is imbalancing. Cause I'm having a problem when I, when something doesn't balance, I feel like I get scatterbrained. And I don't, I don't know exactly what to like step one, step two, step three to get it to balance. Does that make sense? Yeah. You mean like if your trial balance doesn't balance or, or anything really. Okay. But um, yeah, mostly the trial balance. Yeah. I mean, so, okay, let me, let's see, let me think of a, so there's a couple things at play. Um, let me come over here to my trial balance here. And I, you know, so it's going to let me, oh, I have to hit enable editing. All right. So, so this trial balance, of course, is coming from the balances from our, our ledger, right? Our, whether we did a missed T accounts or whether we did the, the more formal ledger, it's the balances of each account at the end of the, period, right? And then the ledger, it's coming from the journal entries, right? Where we, we've recorded each journal entry, we've made a debit to one account and a credit to another, and then we carry that. So, so I mean, so my, my first, you know, if the, the most likely, not the most likely, the easiest to catch would be like, 
it will see. So what depends on is if, if I, in real life, I'm going to be able to look back at my ledger, but sometimes on a, in a problem, I can't. So sometimes the totals were just given to me and it's like, make a trial balance out of this. And so then the first step I would do is I would be like, okay, so what's the difference here? So the difference is 400, right? Like that I have $400 more on the debit side than on the credit side. That can really only occur if either I made a $400 error on one side, like I either made the debit, uh, I, I went over by too much on an entry on the debit side by 400 or under by 200, or if I posted completely to the wrong side, um, that, you know, so those are the, those are the main things. So the first step, honestly, is to go back and review these totals here against my ledgers, whether it's a ledger I had to work out, um, like it was a problem where I had to do the ledgers and then create this, or whether the ledger totals were given to me. And then I would see, you know, I would just have to go through them line by line and be like, okay, um, accounts payable was actually 800 and now they balance. Um, if I review all the ledgers and all the ledger balances match the balances on my trial balance, then I've got to go back to my journal entries, right? And make sure that the amounts I had in my journal entry match what's on my ledger. It's real easy when transferring it over from the journal to the ledger to either transpose a number or, or it's also easy to, to type in a debit on the journal entry as a credit on the ledger or something like that. Um, and, 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 you know, I mean, that's really it. Um, you know, and then if, if the, if all of my journal entries match up what's on my ledger and my ledger matches up what's on my trial balance, then I got to say, well, I must've made an error in a, actually making the journal entry. And then I've got to go all the way back to looking at the source, you know, transaction and saying, um, but a lot of times when you can look at the difference, you know, you can real quick limit it. So if I'm if I'm off by four hundred dollars here, I can kind of, you know, I, I can start by well, again, it it just depends because sometimes I'm five hundred dollars over on one side and and this side's correct, and other times I'm five or you know four hundred dollars under on this side and this side's off. So I still have to go back and compare it to my ledger. Okay, so I, mean, I wish I wish I had a simple answer for you, but. Right, That's so it's basically just making sure you've crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's properly. Yeah, and you know, and and sometimes you have you have an inkling. You're like, yeah, I think I remember I was confused on this part. <laughs> so you go look at that part, but other times you don't, and you just happen to search through it. But you know, usually that first step of checking this these balances against the ledger balances is where you find it because it was just a little error when you were typing it when you're moving it over. Um, but sometimes you have to go all the way back to the journal entry if you just can't find it anywhere. Okay. What's nice about modern accounting software is if I try to enter a journal entry where the debits don't match the credits, it's going to go, hey, dummy, you can't do this journal entry. They don't match, right? Um, and, you know, we don't do accounting very often just like on an Excel spreadsheet anymore. We use software that's a little smarter than that. Cool. Um. Another question I had uh, a while back, I don't remember what lesson it was, but we were talking about accrued expenses and accrued revenues. Uh -huh. And um, I was trying to explain it to my wife. And whilst I was explaining it to her, I realized that I only kind of understand it. So I was wondering if there's a simple explanation. I, so the way I understand it right now is it's basically revenue or expenses that have not yet been received or paid from a previous accounting period. Is that accurate? Yeah. So, so we know that sometimes we earn revenues, but we haven't yet received the money. Other times we uh, earn money uh, or we, we receive money before we earn the revenue. Right. And so, you know, so, so there's really four things that can happen. Those accrued, and those deferrals. So we have the accrued revenue and expense and the deferred revenue expense. And so um, an accrued revenue is typically where I've earned revenue, but I haven't yet been paid for it. And so the most common way this happens is in businesses that do like retainer type work, like uh, attorneys, accountants, 
people like that is we just do work for our client and we just sort of record the hours as we go, but we don't really pay attention to it. And the customer doesn't pay us till we bill them. Then we get to the end of the month and we need our books to show the correct amount of revenue. So we add up the number of hours, multiply that by our rate, and then enter that amount. We, we bill the client. We say, hey, you owe me $1,200 for the work I did for you this month. Um, and we put that on our books as a revenue, but because we haven't been paid yet, we, we also put it as accounts receivable. Gotcha. So that's what we mean by an accrued revenue is a, rev a revenue we have earned, but not yet been paid for. Cool. Gotcha. And then it's the same thing just in reverse for an expense. Yeah. So an accrued expense would be an expense that we've incurred, but we have not yet paid. Uh, like, say for like our employees doing work for us, but we don't pay them till payday, which is in the next accounting period. We want to record, you know, usually we don't worry about it. We just wait till payday and record their pay. But sometimes we get to the end of the month and we realize, oh, they've worked five days, but the payday is not till Friday, which is the second of next month. We still need to show the expense as part of this month because that's when the expense was incurred. So we go ahead and, and write salary expense and then write salaries payable. And then gotcha, gotcha. And then uh just real quick to make sure I have it right in my brain. Can you explain deferred yeah. revenue versus yeah? So a deferred revenue is like where somebody pays me in advance for rev. So I've gotten paid already, but I haven't earned the revenue yet. Right. Um, so like um like unearned rent or unearned right, right. Whatever. Yeah. So like I I own a storage rental business, and so people will often just like pay me for a year. And I can't really write, like, let, let's say, let's just to make the math is easy. Let's say the storage unit's $100 a month and someone gives me $1,200. <laughs> I can't really just record $1,200 in revenue because I haven't earned that revenue yet. So instead, I record, when they give it to me, I record $1,200 to unearned rent um, and then show my cash going up. And then each month, I, I record the earning of $100 worth of that revenue. So I, I then... Um, you know, I credit the unearned, or I mean, I debit the unearned rent and I, and I credit the rent revenue account. And at the end of 12 months, I'll have fully, you know, depleted that unearned rent account down to zero and fully at a hundred dollars a month shown the earning of that revenue. Gotcha. And then the same thing with a, with like an accrued, I mean, a, a deferred expense. Um, it's, that's an expense we pay for in advance. So maybe, if I'm on the other side of that, I'm paying my rent for the next, you know, six months or whatever it is. Um, I can't, I can't write that all as an expense because I haven't incurred the expense. So instead I create an asset called prepaid rent. And then each month I recognize a portion of that as an expense. Gotcha. So are supplies an example, another example of a deferred mm -hmm. expense? Okay. Yeah. Cause we've taken cash and we've converted it into another asset. And then we'll claim the expense for it as we consume it or use it up. Gotcha. Okay. Someone is not happy. No, she's not. Okay. <laughs> um, well, that's all the questions I had. Thank you so much. Well, I hope I hope it was helpful. Um, it was. What's hard about online class is like, there's no wonder, you know, you, you're like, I could send him an email and maybe I'll get a response in 12 hours. Every once in a while you get lucky and catch the teacher there. Like they just happen to be on their computer, but a lot of times there's this lag, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. And I, I wish I could get on these more. I'm usually working at this time. So it's like, but. And the tutors I've heard good things about too, as another option, you can go into that little tutoring thing. And Okay. And I thought Daniel just bailed, but he's back. <laughs> Yeah, that he's was weird. Like, Sorry about that. He's like, thanks, I'm out. I was just like, for whatever reason, the screen went <laughs> blank, and I was like, <laughs> I can sense you're winding up. See ya. Like that. No. That's no. that's like me at the end of like a particularly long priesthood lesson or something. I'm just like waiting to bolt, but uh, <laughs> I got other stuff to do anyway. So all right. Well, thanks. Um, any questions or anything else, Daniel, before we, we finish up? No, it was good. I thought he asked a lot of really great questions and I, it, I'm you good. know, I, I promise you that other people will find value in these. So I'm going to post this to the, to the announcements. Cause I'm sure there's other people that have those questions, but couldn't be here for whatever reason. So thanks for asking them. You no problem. You're like the conscience of the, you're, you're Jiminy cricket. 
whole <laughs> class or i don't know you know whatever hopefully, all right hopefully. well well ephraim since since daniel said the opening prayer would you be willing to give the closing prayer most certainly awesome <clears throat> thanks Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day and we're thankful for the opportunity we had to gather together, to uh, study together, and to learn more about accounting. Um, please bless us as we go throughout our day that we will have thy spirit to be with us. And please bless us in our studies and our work that we will be able to have thy assistance. And we ask these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.